What is up YouTube, my name is Sam. I work under the artist name of Kayo. You guys have been asking me fairly frequently how I mix and master my beats for release on Spotify, Apple Music, and all those other streaming platforms. So this is it, this is the video where I'm gonna break down exactly how I mix my beats and how I master my beats for release in 2023 and going into 2024. Let's jump into FL Studio and take a look. Okay, so what I've got here is a song that I've been working on. It's not totally finished, but just for the purpose of this video, we can use this for mixing and mastering. Give you a quick little preview of how the song sounds, and then I'll talk about how I go about my process. That's just a quick preview of how the song's currently sounding. It's sounding pretty good, kind of like the vibe. It's not finished. There's definitely more stuff that I want to add. Like there's no transition sounds. We don't really have any like effects going on. It's fairly simple at the moment. There's definitely some more arranging to go on. There's definitely more than he's doing in the track. But just for the sake of the video, we are looking at mixing and mastering so we can use this going forward. Probably won't go into mixing too much. I generally mix as I go. So if I open up my mixer here, you can see that lots of my levels are set. Lots of my levels are already kind of tweaked. I've got a little bit of panning going on with the guitar lines. The side chains already running. This is running my template. So all my side chains and everything are already set up. When I mix, I generally do it as I go. So as I add instruments, I mix around and kind of tweak as I go. So what I don't do is set everything to one level and then go through and mix it all because I just don't find that conducive to how I work. What I'm generally listening for is making sure that you can hear everything in the mix and everything has its own space. So what I'm gonna do is just listen through the track now and then if I pick up on anything, I'll show you guys and we'll make those tweaks together. So we've got something here. So this guitar here, the guitar three, I wrote as sort of like a main melody. It comes in here and I kind of want it to play at least twice in the song. I might take it out here in the bridge and have something else going on, but just for now, I haven't got to that yet. When everything comes back in and you get it all playing together, it's a little bit too quiet. You can't hear it very well. It's not as prominent and it's getting kind of washed out between the bell and this other guitar up. So I'll just play that now and you hopefully be able to hear what I mean. I'm just listening for in this mix has everything got its own space. So all I'm going to do really simply is, is just turn that up. I might pan it a little bit further to the left. I've got one to the left and one to the right, but not completely. So you're still getting them sort of down the middle because these two guitars played together. You've got a real nice like wide sound. Let's take a listen and see how it sounds now. Cool. I think that's sounding so much better. And that's generally how I go about my mixing. Hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of what I'm listening for and the things that I look for when I'm mixing. I will do another listen through after I've done the master. Speaking of the master, let's get into that. So currently on my master chain, I've got a couple of plugins. None of them are switched on. So let's delete everything and we'll do this from scratch. Here we go. We've got absolutely nothing on the master now. Let's jump into it. First thing that I'll do is I'll go to my little mastering section down here and I'll load up the Ulean Loudness Meter 2. Now this is a free plugin and it's just great to give you an idea of where the loudness of your track is currently. So I generally will master a section that's got all of the parts in because then you can make sure everything's got its space. You can make sure that everything is nice and clear in the master. Then you can listen to the rest of the song after you've done your mastering. So if I just pull up Ulean Loudness Meter and then if I hit play, I'm 
really looking at here is the short term, the integrated. I want those to get to around like minus 14, minus 13, minus 14 is kind of optimal for Spotify and most streaming services. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. This track's pretty loud already. So I don't have to do too much in terms of loudness. There's definitely still some more that we can do. What I'll then load up is a plugin called Finalizer. Now this is a patcher preset that was made by another producer. I believe his name is Frank Pohl. Find him on YouTube. He makes tons of patcher presets and they are amazing. And it essentially is a complete mastering chain in the patcher, in the plugin with this really, really nice, easy to use display. This is what I use for most of my masters at the moment. It's not the only thing I use, but what you have is a multi-band compressor, then an equalizer, got a shaper here where you can kind of tame specific frequency. You've got some saturation, a clipper, a limiter, some low cuts and high cuts, and then a high pass and a low pass. So without going too much into it, if you do really wanna learn how this works, go and watch Frank's video on this. It's really, really easy to digest and you will know how to use it in like 10 minutes or something. It's great. You have two tabs here. You've got a map, which is all of the links that are running in the plugin. If you double click on any of these, you can see multiband compressor, EQ, shaper. You can get a visual of what the plugin's doing. So the first thing on here is this multiband compressor. So if I play the track and then we can see, you can see in the EQ there, what's happening. And if I move some of these, you can see we can move the bands and start making them do what we need to do. Now with the multi-band compressor, what I tend to do is look at the visualizer, listen to the track and any sections that are just peaking like too high, I will just compress them a little bit. I don't do too much with this at all because you can also use the EQ to do a yes, similar thing, but it's an active compressor. It ducks frequencies. So if things are starting to go too high, you can kind of just duck those and keep things nice and level. So if we take a listen here, you can see this section here, it's a little bit higher than the rest. So what I'll do is drag that three over and then we can start getting just a little bit of compression on that section. Maybe we'll just do this six here as well, just a tiny bit. And that's probably about it. That's just gonna keep things really nice and level. So if we now close that down and open up the EQ, same thing. We can press play, we can watch the EQ in here and we can use all of these to tweak the relevant knobs in the EQ. And all I'm looking for is those peaks and those valleys in the EQ. There shouldn't be too much because if we've mixed it right, there shouldn't be too much EQ that needs to be done on the master. I've noticed in this section here, there is a little bit of a valley where there isn't too much going on. So we might just boost those. I do generally like to boost these mid low frequencies, give you like a, a little bit of warmth. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of give it a go and see what happens. And then yeah, I might just boost that presence as well to give it a little bit more clarity, a little bit more like fresh air in the top end of there. And then the shaper. So we open this up, you'll see you get an EQ or just one band. If I move the frequency knob here, you'll see it slides along and then you can set the amount of taming essentially. There's a listen button here. So you can just listen to the frequency that you're focusing on. And this is really handy for making like little cuts if you've got a frequency you don't like or there's something that's really jumping out, you can just tame it. Let's listen to the whole thing and find something. So that guitar note there was really, really, really harsh above the rest of the mix. So let's find that. There it is and we'll just tame it. Not too much. And that's just going to actively kind of compress that one frequency, which is really nice. A little bit of saturation here. What I tend to do is turn the amount up to maybe about 50% and then start with nothing and bring it in. So I'm starting to hear it right there. Drag it down a little bit and then bring the amount down just to get like a nice warmth from that saturation. Again, 
The clipper is in here. You can find it and open it up if you want. I tried to do this without looking at it just because you can do it purely on how it sounds. What I'm looking for is finding the point where it's starting to duck that sound and then just raising it a tiny bit, just clipping the real peaks of the track. So somewhere around there, And then the same with the limiter, we're not doing too much here, we're just adding a little bit of gain. Too much. So that's kind of the main part of my mastering chain. What I'll then do usually is chuck on another EQ, a final EQ, to give me a little bit of a visual view of how the track is, is looking, how it's sounding, is it all kind of filling up the frequencies, are we getting a nice rounded sound, and is everything sort of level on the master. We can see we've got lots going on. And I can hear that we're getting some clipping on something. I think it's that bass. Bring the bass down a little bit. I just noticed that low end was really kind of booming and did a little bit final tweaks in the mix. Took the bass down a tiny bit, half a decibel. That's all. And what's nice about using FL Studio mastering straight in the project is that I can now do little tweaks to the mix. I can. If I find the piano is slightly too loud, I can come in here and just bring that down a little bit. I can, you know, we don't have to bounce the track out and then master it. Some people will probably tell me that's wrong and maybe it is. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what my master channel looks like at the end. It's two plugins, it's an EQ, and then essentially that finalizer, go and download that. I do really recommend it. It's essentially multi-brand compression, an EQ, some sort of like de a little bit of saturation, a clipper and a limiter. And that's essentially all I have on my master channel. What I can do now is go back, listen to the whole song and see if the master sounds good for the whole track. This is sounding good on my Audio-Technica M40s. What I will do before I'm totally finished is I'll bounce the track out to a wave. I will listen to it through my monitors. I'll listen to it through my laptop speaker and then I'll usually listen to it through like my phone or some other Bluetooth headphones that I've got. It sounds good on everything. It's ready to go. As long as it sounds good to you and it sounds good on your devices, it's ready to go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's how I do my mixing, my mastering. Like I say, I can't really show you too much of the mixing side of things because I mix as I go and I've already written this. If there's any more ideas of things that you guys want to see, Drop a comment on this video, I'm always listening, I'm always reading your comments and try to reply to every single one. And if you do have suggestions for things that you'd like me to talk about, there's things that you want me to cover, let me know because I will. I um, you know, I really enjoy making the videos that you guys want to see. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Peace out.